Welcome everyone, Costin here with Manor Lords, the demo of Manor Lords, a game that's going to soon come out on Early Access, I think. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be going over the early game and I'm just going to give you guys an idea of what to do in the early game to survive winter. Well, one of the things you want to do to make your life easier is start with double supplies. The demo is limited, no military stuff, no diplomacy, nothing like that. You, all you have right now is your starting uh, region and uh, village building, basically. Now, I have to give this cr game a great deal of credit for the fact that, one, it looks really good. Like, you can zoom in all the way in, and there's a great deal of detail over here. Reminds me of Kingdom Come Deliverance, really. And also, that loads extremely uh, quickly. And also, if I turn off the uh, turn on the FPS meter over here, performance, uh, rather, FPS, sorry. Performance, FPS. Uh, it's running 110 FPS. Now, I do have a high-end computer, but you can't believe how many games I've played that would dream to have this level of detail and to have that level of performance. So first off, I'm going to start building some roads around uh, my initial buildings there. I'm not sure if it matters. Now, uh, three of these are going to go away. The only one that's going to remain is this, is the hitching post with the oxen. Which is going to be uh, going to be one of your main bottlenecks. Now, in this video, I want to go over surviving the early game, surviving winter because winter is coming. Now, some people would say that if you start only with berries initially, you might as well restart until you get some. Though they might have fixed that already. I don't know. Like I started two campaigns, I started with two wild animals next to me to wild animal packs. But anyway, as you get started, the first thing you're gonna do, wanna do is get a lodging camp. You're gonna wanna build it in an area where there's a lot of trees, but it's also close enough to your oxen there. So for instance, over here, you can build it, uh, you can build it up again. You can build another one when you need it. And that's all I'm going to do right now. And so my workers will get going over there. I'm also going to wait to get a bit more wood before I do anything else. Now you need to worry about food, fuel, though you can worry about fuel uh, when winter comes you can get the woodcutter lodge uh, to deal with that. Uh, but really you're gonna need timber. Now timber, the way it works is you put the lodging camp, you put assigned workers who are going to fell the trees, but I think only the oxen can pick, pick up the trees that have fallen. The thing is, the oxen is also going to be used to transport uh, to tra transport construction materials uh, to and from building uh, sites, really. So if you start constructing structures, you're not going to be able to pick up timber, which is going to become a problem real quick. Now, once I get a bit of timber, I'd say about 20 or so, I am going to start constructing uh, some housing. I have enough food for the... or for a decent amount of it. Now, I am going to have to care about it, don't get me wrong on that. Uh, but, okay, that's decent enough. Let's get some storage. You are going to need a granary, and you are going to need a storehouse. Okay. Uh, prioritize the storehouse and then I'm also going to construct some housing from village life you can select the boundaries of locations and you can select how many of them there are going to be that's gonna be a lot and so the oxen is not going to worry about the trees right now Rather, it's going to move construction materials to the various houses. You also have workers for the houses as well. Now, food-wise, uh, if I go to gathering, I want to set up a forage hut. The reason I want to do that is because it's better to leave the animals for when winter comes. Because you can hunt them during the winter, but you can't collect berries because they're seasonal. So set it up. Uh, get some houses going. Like prioritize the houses. You start with enough food to last you a decent amount. 
even if I start with default resources, I'd still have, like I would have used up all my starting timber. Um, I'm also going to need water. So the game will tell you to get all those buildings first and then worry about water. Now, water-wise, you need to construct a well. Well, first I'm going to need um, a bit of timber. But yeah, I am going to need water because it is being affected. It is affecting my population. Alright, get some foragers. And yeah, my approval is being affected by that. Might have been smarter to actually just construct a well instead of building so many houses from the very get-go, so to speak. But it is nice to see them constructing things over there. Okay, so the oxen is moving a piece of wood over there. And that does count quite a bit for the construction. And then you have the workers. It is a bit inefficient having the workers move around like this. But they are constructing the houses well. I think like being able to get more oxen from the very start would have, would be a bit... Would be very, very useful, I admit. Alright, so we got the net sorted out. Let's get a well. Set it up as the biggest priority. Alright, that's sorted out. gonna move um, quite a few of these guys to get berries need the food need them to collect while they're still in season okay new message new objective get well and get some houses basically you'll have enough resources if you don't if you start with a normal start yeah you might want to spend some time collecting timber before building houses or maybe just build one to start getting some houses but yeah can I stay with his drink don't love seeing them work. I'm gonna assign some workers. Though you might have to multi manage, uh, multitask workers better than I am right here. Either way. So they, they're gonna collect a decent amount of berries over there. Right, people are coming in. Now you may want to select one of the houses and just give it some um, vegetable guards. Just one, however, not more more than one. The reason is that you want to start getting a farm pretty quickly. Oh yes, get a farm, you will need it. Uh, I'm going to build it here and then I'm going to build a field right here and I'm oh, it starts at fallow you want to get emmer so you want to get grain and then then we get the real objective over there so in just a couple of minutes we've set up uh, we've set that up. We got a decent amount of food that will help me get through a lot of the winter. Though not necessarily all of it. That's where hunting animals comes into play. Though if you play your cards correctly, you may not actually have to bother uh, with farming. Uh, with uh, hunting animals. You might leave that as an emergency measure if you absolutely need it. So the berry collection is full, like they've collected a lot of berries over there. Alright, they've finished the farm. And I'm going to take a lot of workers. Get one from the storehouse even. And have these guys start planting. It's August, it's actually good to start uh, growing right now. Move from the granary as well. 
And if we can get this going fast enough, we can actually get quite a few crops going. Now, I don't have any timber right here. Not in any good quantity, sadly enough. So, the problem is the oxen is... Like, okay, so your woodcutters, right? They break down the trees, but the oxen need to move them to a camp so they can process them. It's not going to be able to handle things on its own. Alright, so they're collecting over there. And this is really all you need to do, like set up a foraging hut or uh, hunters to be able, or one hunting camp to be able to get enough food to last you through um, for the winter. If you can get the farm up, that's even better. Alright, I'm gonna get more houses once I set, um, set that all up. There we go. Need more houses to be able to uh, get uh, to get more uh, people in this village. I need someone working the granary to transport all the berries that have been collected over there. So yeah, you need houses to go over your population cap. Sadly enough, that's how this game goes. At some point, you may just want to idle your oxen and not construct anything. Because if you're constantly... Uh, if you're constantly going with it... Uh, then... Then you won't collect any wood. Which will obviously create a lot of issues for you in the long term. So idling with it is not necessarily a problem. Okay. Now... This is September. You can... Force an early harvest. Um, and I'm just going to free some of those guys up. Alright, so the berries still have 31. Just collect that. Now you can force an early harvest when it's like 50%, uh, 15%. And you can also do a crop rotation. No, because if you wait, it's going to take a significant amount of time... To get that going and if you want crops in winter to survive said winter you may want to speed it up right gonna get more villages uh village houses three more get more villagers I'm going to wait until November, but it's at 21%. I could already begin the harvest if I so desire. Alright, winter is coming. It would be nice to know how long you had until... Um, until the next month. Alright, so click this button and they'll start early harvesting. You can see them going into the field. And they'll collect all of that. Any idle workers will help out with this as well. And I do have quite a few of them. Okay, now, to not starve, it's not enough. You need a windmill and you need to place it in a location where it's going to have a great deal of e efficiency. And you need to turn this... Alright, let's get some barley set up there. Got quite a few free workers. Right, just a few berries left. Alright, gonna stop there since I don't need it anymore. And get that going. 
Get the windmill going. Get the flour being processed. Uh, processed. You don't really need a lot. And they're gonna start planting. We are in December. Now, in December, with winter coming in, you are gonna need to worry about firewood. Basically, fuel. Now, firewood is dealt with in a simple manner. Get... Uh, get the logging camp. Uh, no, not the logging camp. A woodcutter. Get the woodcutter. As winter st uh, starts. And he will collect fuel for your peasants to use. So they are not... Uh, starving during winter. And you can see these guys are... Like, they're turning the wheat into grain. And then they're turning that into bread at uh, the oven. And thus, food issues are solved during the winter. If you want to have an easier time with this, of course, you can also set up a hunting camp. Like, for instance, right here. And set up a road. I think it does help with moving things around. The roads could use a bit more work. There we go. Bad. That means I will not starve during winter. And that's all you need to know to really get going. Now, to fulfill these objectives uh, that you need in order to get all of these level 2, you do need to set up a market area, but that's uh, pretty simple enough, right? You just go to uh, not trade, village life, if I'm not mistaken, yep, and you set up a market area. It doesn't have to be especially large, so let's say... Okay, here... Oh, let's go with that, that. And then you can construct some stalls. Though I would avoid building clothing stalls to begin with. Now we're out of fuel because I forgot to set up any, to send anyone there. So they're gonna start freezing to death if I'm not uh, handling this very well. All right, they'll uh, they'll get fuel, so fuel situation has been resolved. That is gonna be a bit of an emergency. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, gonna need more houses. Now. Before I end this video, uh, that's a good enough start, right? But before I end this video, let's talk about tools. You need tools in order to uh, get vegetables, right? Okay. And you have enough uh, to, uh, to get going with a farm. You have enough to get uh, some one vegetable garden. But what if you want more? Well, you need to go into uh, to, uh, mining and set up a mining location, an iron location, and send workers uh, to work there as well. And then once that's done, you're going to need to go into industry and get uh, the blowery and then the smithy. But as you can see, the food situation has been solved. The wood cutting, uh, the wood cutter is doing a, jo a good job. The berries will start recovering at this point. Seasonal as they are. And I didn't even send anyone here, I think. <laughs> All right.
of freeing uh, some guys up. Leave at least one worker on this uh, woodcutter lodge. Because um, if you leave one guy to gather throughout the year, then he'll gather probably enough fuel. Uh, to... To last you. The year. Now, they're getting the barley set up. It's a good idea to do a crop rotation, by the way. So, for instance, over here, though I wanted to do that manually, we're gonna get flux, like we're gonna get barley, then grain, then flux, uh, flax, rather. Get the blowery set up. Alright, we got berries uh, put uh, being put up there. Not enough wood to get more houses right now, sadly enough. Food is not really an issue. Though you will want some hunters to get leather. Or rather to get pelts, which you can then turn into leather. Yeah, get the mining pit, get the blowery, get the smithy. And that is going to create tools for you. Now, what do you do with tools? Well, beyond using them to make carrots everywhere, you can also trade them. They're gonna be valuable. A bunch of materials will be valuable, though I do find tools are pretty good for that. You set up a trading post. And you send your guys to sell the tools. Now that's going to generate uh, regional wealth. And then you can use the regional wealth to buy things that you may need. Like for instance, getting malt so you don't have to uh, farm it. Though in my case, I have certainly done so. We are in April. There's still a plenty of grain, plenty of food. We don't have any issues with respect to that. Now, for this objective, I need to fulfill all of this. I need to get food, I need to get clothing, entertainment, and faith. All of that. Keep the berries working. One guy can handle uh, the berries for an entire year, I believe. One woodcutter. When your village grows, of course, uh, things are going to end up being different. Just get a guy in the smithy. And get more houses as well. You always need to be constantly expanding in this game. I feel. Oh yeah, wood is a bit of an issue right now. So what I'm going to do here with the trading post, you can move this around. You can export it. There are things you can export, uh, food-wise, for instance. Bread can be pretty valuable, actually. Like, you can generate quite a bit of wealth regionally. I'm gonna set it to 100. And put three uh, traders uh, to work on that. And that's going to generate wealth. Now, beyond using the wealth to buy things, beyond using that, I guess I could get more oxen, right? If you want more oxen, uh, one of the things you need to do is set up the livestock uh, stock trading. Okay, they're working on that. They've collected some barley. Just one, really? For all that? Okay, <laughs> that's a bit more reasonable, I guess. So you can see I have an enormous amount of food. The food variety will help you out, by the way. Now I'm gonna wait for a bit more wood. All right, I'm gonna stop with iron ore because don't need any more. Get more lo uh, guys on the logging camp. Get rid of some guys here, get one. And we're gonna get some oxen as well. And then we're gonna get sheep. Generating that regional wealth. Trading will generate stuff for you. Selling the bread.
All right, we don't need more pelts. We got a decent amount of them anyway. So I think more oxen is certainly gonna help my situation. Take out one of those. Constant micromanagement. That's what it is about. Managing the various resources that you do have available. So they planted that. It is growing. These guys are free then. They don't need to do anything while it's still growing. We're in July. Doing quite well. Doing quite well. Okay, so I got a bunch of wood. And I'm gonna go to village life. And I'm going to get more housing. I kind of feel like the game... Should encourage you to build more wells. Because like you just build one well and you just then ignore it. Then I'm going to need a church. And I'll worry about the tavern in just a second. But yeah, food situation is pretty good. Firewood is pretty good. Timber is not so good. We do have a bunch of tools and we do have a bunch of flour. Actually, I think I'll sell some of that. No, selling that flour would just be a waste. Let's stop there. We got some free workers, so let's uh, have them work on bread. Just sign at least one and get some carrots going. Not in every house. But enough. Like it can be, uh, or rather vegetables as they're called. It can be useful. I just feel like I should have more than one well, so I'm gonna put position one more well there. Now to get these to level two, you need to get uh, two to food variety, two to clothing, one to entertainment, and one faith. A single church would solve the faith issue. Um, food variety, yeah, hunting, berries, getting carrots, all that will help solve that. Alright, gonna free up a worker. And move more on the storehouse. Many more in the granary. You'll just be swimming in food if you get a simple farm like that. Yeah, just get them to keep working on that. We got the oxen. Does it help? Yes, it does. So getting more oxen is actually going to be important. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if there is a limit. Is there this sun or fire above? But oxen will help you out in a, a great deal. Over there. Now, it's half an hour in, and I'm uh, doing incredibly well over here. More carrots. Thank you very much. What's the timber situation? So, yeah, getting... Like, the the thing is, you need the, the transportation capacity, right? Even if they it feels like with oxen that they get stuck in. Like, you need them to move the timber. You need to have them active over there. It's leveled up.
So I've got four oxen doing my job for me. The game won't tell you this, that having extra oxen really helps you out. Like if you just use the livestock tra uh, trader uh, to get more oxen, it will genuinely help uh, your development of the village in a major, major way. I honestly, I kind of realized that uh, this particular playthrough. Okay, okay, a new message. We need to pay the royal tax. Probably won't manage it uh, this year, sadly enough. That's uh, unlikely going to happen. Uh, that's unlikely to happen right now. Now, I can use, uh, if I do get more regional wealth. I can live with less tools. Okay, and then I think it's the point to start set up, uh, setting up, sending one worker there, getting a, mo uh, a big, a different logging camp. Now, one thing I will want to do here is get some get some barley. It's gonna cost a bit. All right, winter has come. We should be fine. Just gonna put more woodcutters out there. Might need a second camp even. of woodcutters. Uh, in order to have enough supplies for the winter. How many oxen do I have? Five. Alright, gonna send some hunters in the woods. Hurry up some more cars. I'm at risk of running out of fuel. It is a genuine risk. They keep working there. There's enough food for everyone. All right, and there's enough timber for everyone. So more villagers. Them up. Should be fine if barely. Back up on the merchants. to scrape by but we will yeah <laughs> yeah using your regional wealth to get oxen that really helps the construction 
Because they move the timber around. And uh, even when they're done with construction. Oh. Well, that was sadly enough a uh, crash, gentlemen. Oops. Um, that's my headphones falling on the ground. Uh, that was a bit unfortunate, really. So yeah, Unreal Engine Crash. Well, it's certainly a demo for a game in early access, but if you get to that point, really, you're pretty much one. You just need to set up... Um, let me just re uh, reload the game. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, but after that point, as we start the game, uh, after that point, you can just really easily get to a stage um, to get everything that you need in order to continue. Because after that, after that, all you need to do, just as I start a new game, all you need to do is get the. To, for food variety, it's simple. For clothing, yeah, you just get sheep, right? You you set up the sheep just to understand it very easily. You set up the sheep, you go to trade, you get livestock, right? You get sheep and then uh, you get a pasture for the sheep and a sheep farm and that will generate wool. You can also just buy it. And then you can use a tannery for all the leather, all the pelts you've been picking up from the animals you've been hunting. You can turn that into leather, that will turn into clothes. Uh, and then you need a weaver shop to get clover, uh, cloves variety. You can also buy them uh, if you so desire from, uh, through the trading system. It's a shame that the game doesn't have a save system right now. I really would like that as a YouTuber, but I think a lot of people would like that at the moment. For alcohol, you need a malt house and then a brewery, and then you can, and then once you've got that, like this will tr turn barley into malt, malt into ale. And in the village life, you can set up a, a tavern. No problem. And once you all get all that, you can get those buildings to tier to tier two. You can get the uh, plots to tier two. Give will give some options, but then you will be able to construct the gatehouse, um, then the manor house, the bailey wall, the taxes, the tax collector. Like you basically set up a castle, so to speak, in a certain area of the village. And then you can get the tax collector there. The amount of money will, you generate will be more than enough to pay for the king's taxes. Though I think the first tax, like if you start with some money, that would be great. Because, yeah, the first tax is pretty rough. Like you can't just, like even if you rush for it, it's going to take a while to build a manor house. And you need to build the manor, uh, you need to build the manor house in order, I, I think you need to build a manor house to get the tax collector. But anyway, that's all I uh, had to show for it here. Hope this video helps you out to get a good start in this game. But yeah, once you do that, that's pretty much all there is to see in the demo. It is a really good game from my perspective. I've seen this with many early access titles where um, they they didn't have, they wish they had such a strong start. This game, yeah, it has bugs, it has issues. It's unfinished clearly, but it's amazing. Like. Think of Black and White, Stronghold 1, 2, uh, or rather Stronghold 1 and Stronghold Crusader, because, yeah, I consider Crusaders the real Stronghold 2. Um, or a Nano game, if you so desire. It's probably a bit of it, all of those, and it's fantastic. With a, with a good helping of Kingdom Come Deliverance in terms of how it looks. Like, yeah, it's just like, it's so uncanny, but I guess... This game, like Kingdom Come Deliverance, was trying to go for realism, so... And it, my god, it, it's, it's amazing. Though I, would, though I think the structures are a bit too small for your player character. But anyway, uh, Kostin Sanya, stay tuned for more.